Hi everyone, this is Top3D Shop, and in this video we will tell you about the FlashForge Creator 3 FDM 3D printer. Despite the fact that this printer is called Creator 3, it has nothing to do with the Creator Pro and Creator 2 models, being fundamentally different from them both in size, design, and capabilities. The printer is equipped with an array of useful features, two independent extruders, filament runout sensor, semi-automatic bed leveling, touchscreen, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, print area lighting, webcam, extruder cleaning system, and others. But first things first. The outer dimensions of the Creator 3 are 627 by 485 by 615 millimeters. The exterior of the device is lined with gray and black plastic with a touchscreen and a USB port located on the top of the front panel. There are transparent plastic doors on the front and top sides of the device. When printing with materials prone to shrinkage, such as ABS or nylon, the closed doors retain heat in the chamber. In the case with PLA, the doors can be opened to dissipate the heat and provide consistent part cooling during the print process. The side covers reveal filament storage compartments. Most spools fit well, but some wider ones and those with narrow holes in the center may be hard to accommodate. But you can always make or even print some kind of external spool holder. The back panel houses a power cord connector, on-off button, an Ethernet RJ45 port, and two exhaust fans with HEPA filters. Overall, the machine is tough and heavy, weighing up to 40 kilograms. Looking inside, the frame is made of thick steel, the whole structure is very rigid. Most of the moving mechanisms are made of aluminum with a few casted plastic parts. There are no 3D printed elements in the machine. The axes move on 12mm rods and high-quality linear bearings, with no play or jamming during the motion. They are homed without the use of limit switches, just by the stepper motor drivers. The main feature of the Creator 3 is the dual independent direct extruder system. Two extruders can move independently of each other along the x-axis. This opens up such interesting possibilities as printing two identical parts at the same time in duplicate mode, or printing one model and its mirrored copy in mirror mode. The extruders are equipped with all-metal hot ends and steel nozzles. They can easily heat up to 300 degrees Celsius, allowing to process a wide range of plastics. The Creator 3 uses proprietary nozzles comprising a nozzle tip set on a long metal tube. Special metal brush wipers are installed on the right and left sides of the bed to clean the nozzles during printing, with compartments to collect the discarded plastic. The kinematics of the Creator 3 is similar to MakerBot, but of course it has some differences due to the independent extruder's setup. The print area is quite large at 300 by 250 by 200 millimeters. The hotbed has a removable and slightly flexible cover, making it easy to remove large models from the platform. It is fixed on the bed with several retractable fasteners. The cover surface has a build tack coating, providing good adhesion, although in our experience we still had to resort to the use of additional adhesives, such as a glue stick. The bed can heat up to 120 degrees. Calibration is carried out in semi-automatic mode with touch detection done by piezo sensors built into the extruders. The printer takes measurements at three points with the screen displaying how to adjust the leveling screws. After the bed leveling, it is necessary to calibrate the extruders relative to each other. Along the Z-axis, this happens automatically. Along the X and Y axes, the machine prints longitudinal and transverse lines, and if they do not meet in one line, it is necessary to adjust the space between the extruders. A full calibration procedure takes about 10 minutes. The printer's control board is based on a 32-bit processor, while the motherboard is equipped with modern, quiet, and quality TMC5130A TA stepper motor drivers. The proprietary flash print slicer is used to prepare models for printing. It has all the necessary settings controls. In addition to the basic tools like moving, rotating, centering, and resizing, there is a very useful function for cutting models into parts with autofill of the cut geometry. Also, if you load a 3D model with errors into the slicer, Flash Print will register this and offer automatic correction. The Set Extruder menu allows you to choose which extruder will be used for printing the selected model, including duplication or mirror modes. Supports can be placed both automatically, with specified settings, and manually. There are classic linear supports as well as tree-like structures. There are two modes for slicing settings, Basic and Expert, with the latter giving access to the full list of print settings. In Basic mode, you can choose the type of plastic and the most common settings with the rest configured by the software. Expert mode allows you to change any parameters and create your own profiles for plastics. Flash Print saves files in GX format, containing an image of the model, which is displayed on the printer's screen for preview. You can also use your slicer of choice such as Cura, Simplify 3D, Slicer, and so on. The printer works with ordinary G-code files, but does not show the picture of the object. 
Printing files can be saved on a USB flash drive or sent to a printer from flash print via Wi-Fi or wired network. The printer has 7 gigabytes of built-in memory to store the received files. The only significant disadvantage of this slicer is, perhaps, its very slow previews. The software sometimes lags when checking the sliced model by layer. You can control the printer by using the Flash Cloud web service and registering on their website. Connect the printer to the internet using Wi-Fi or Ethernet, enable Flash Cloud in the printer menu, add the machine to your account, and that's it. Flash Cloud does not offer much versatility. You can monitor the printing process, pause or stop if necessary, and view the image from the camera that does not transmit streaming video but takes a picture and updates every few seconds. This is quite enough to check if the print process is progressing well. It's also possible to upload STL models of up to 100 megabytes and slice them in Flash Cloud. However, few slicing settings are available, only move, rotate, and resize tools. Likewise, only basic presets for print quality adjustment are available in Flash Cloud. There are functions of adding a raft, supports, brim, and walls, as well as selecting a particular extruder or managing dual extruder operation. To test the versatility of the Creator 3, we used a variety of materials trying to take advantage of all of its capabilities. Let's move on to the results. The first part we tried to print was the T-800 Terminator head. It was printed out without supports, with a few auxiliary columns under the jaw that were already built into the model. The Terminator turned out well, with no significant flaws on the final make. After that, we loaded the Creator 3 with Polymaker Polymax PC. It is a high-quality construction material with enhanced strength, toughness, and resistance to high temperatures, the softening point being 117 degrees Celsius. It is great for making functional prototypes, electronics cases, and temperature-resistant parts. First, we printed a Dremel attachment that allows using the compact router as a milling cutter. The part was printed great. The thread needed a few turns to set, but in the end, the add-on fit perfectly to the Dremel tool. To test the printer's setup for higher temperature plastics, we printed a small gear from Polymaker N600 GF25, an industrial fiberglass-filled nylon filament. Its printing temperature is 290 to 310 degrees. The Creator 3 did a good job again, experiencing no issues whatsoever. Since the printer has direct drive extruders, that is, the feed mechanism is located directly above the hot end, this provides better filament feed when printing flexible plastics. We printed a couple of phone cases from Polymaker Polyflex to test how good the Creator 3 can be with a fairly soft 95A Shore hardness material. Some over-extrusion was noticeable on one of the covers, but after some settings adjustments, the issue was resolved and the second case turned out nearly perfect. We also wanted to see how the Creator 3 would handle composite wood-filled filaments, so we printed two Groot figures at different stages of his growth using two different types of such plastics. Little Groot was printed fine. The bottom of the part is perfect, but the model began to wobble a little in the upper part, leading to some flaws in Groot's hair. There was a lot of stringing, but this happens with almost all wood-enhanced plastics. Changing retraction and temperature settings doesn't really help. However, the strings are easily removed with a blade. The adult Groot print experienced some issues. Despite the fact that the layer height was 0.12 millimeters, like on the previous prints, the layering here is more noticeable and turned out uneven in specific areas of the model. Considering that the printer didn't display any instability in feeding the filament, most likely this was related to the material itself. Next, we tried printing in two colors. For this, it is necessary to calibrate the extruders along the X and Y axes. Also, when printing with two plastics, it is desirable to use a so-called wipe wall to clean the nozzle tips before printing the main part. Some plastic may leak from the nozzle during downtime, while wiping the leaked residue will provide more consistent extrusion. We printed a rather complex two-color tree frog model with orange and gold PLA plastic. No supports were added, only a wipe wall and a raft. The frog turned out well, except for some sagging areas that added a sloppy tone to the appearance. But this was expected as some overhangs in this model are really steep, to be fair. The extruders proved to be well calibrated and synchronized, providing smooth transitions between colors both visually and to the touch. Besides printing with two colors, a very practical use of two extruders is adding dissolvable supports. There are two main types of dissolvable materials used for support structures. Water-soluble PVA is usually practiced in combination with PLA or a plastic similar in printing temperature. HIPS dissolves in D-limonene and is used with ABS plastic or other higher temperature filaments. One test run was printed in PLA plus PVA. This is the Hilbert cube and it's impossible to print this model without using two extruders. 
And with the dual extruder system, we can print it in two colors, or in the case of printing one of the parts with soluble material, you can get a cube of a very interesting complex shape. To dissolve the PVA plastic, simply put the model in a container filled with warm water and wait a few hours. We did not wait for complete dissolution. When PVA softens, it can be easily removed with tweezers and washed off with water. For the second test, we chose a combination of ABS and HIPS. The model is a planetary gearbox, printed as a whole already assembled. It's almost impossible to print it without soluble supports. To save time after printing, we broke off some of the supports with wire cutters and then soaked the part with delimonene. It took about a day for HIPS to dissolve. The gearbox turned out great, but unfortunately it did not turn over. In some places, the HIPS plastic cannot dissolve completely, seizing the mechanism. The last thing left to check is the print modes that engage two extruders simultaneously. The first is duplication when the two extruders print the same part on different halves of the bed. We loaded one extruder with copper-filled E-Sun E-Copper PLA and the other with aluminum-filled E-Sun e, e alfil they printed two Chinese coins at the same time with copper and aluminum correspondingly. The parts can be sanded for a more glossy finish after printing. The second mode uses the two extruders at once for a mirror print. One part is printed on one half of the table, and the same part, but mirrored, is made on the second half. We printed the Flexi Dragon model with E-Sun E-Silk plastic, a beautiful material that shimmers and shines in the light. Instead of printing the left and right wings in turn, we printed one of them in mirror mode. Thus, we got both wings, spending half the time on the project. To sum up, printers with independent dual extrusion are a certain trend in the FDM printer market more related to industrial needs. FlashForge, along with some other manufacturers, decided to offer a desktop version with this feature. Our experience with the Creator 3 shows that two independent extruders greatly expand the printing possibilities, especially when the machine is versatile in filament consumption. In the course of trying different plastics, we had to tweak the settings now and again, but the printer did pass all the tests. The Creator 3 surprised us with its stability, convenience, and ease of use, like all previous FlashForge models. The company decided to make the printer as modern as possible and equipped it with a set of useful and pleasant features, such as a built-in camera, filament runout sensor, backlight, semi-automatic calibration, nozzle cleaning wipers, and more. Another great addition is the cloud platform, void of any unique features, but generally convenient for controlling the printer. The Creator 3 is a great choice both for professional use and hobbyists who'd like to own a machine that can reliably print with a wide range of filaments. The device can produce prototypes or functional components for further use. A fairly large build area and multi-filament capabilities of the printer open new opportunities for imaginative projects. This is Top 3D Shop with the FlashForge Creator 3 FDM 3D Printer Review. Subscribe to our channel, leave your comments below, and hit the like button if you've enjoyed the video. See you soon!